Hello everybody, my name is Bryce Frank. I am a forest biometrician working in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Uh, this is a video introducing an R package called Allometric, which is used to predict um, attributes of trees using what are called allometric models. So for an example, an allometric model might be a model that takes the diameter uh, at breast height and predicts the total height of the tree, you know, these types of things. So there's lots of different types of allometric models and the allometric suite of software is attempting to organize these models into sort of a systematic fashion and allow you to use them in analysis. So this is just an introduction video. There's going to be other videos in this series uh, going over what the package can do and how you can help um, make the package better. So let's just take a little cursory overview of what allometric really is. Um, there's kind of three things to consider. There's Allometric, the organization, which is a GitHub organization that contains all of the software that we're working on. Um, there's the Allometric slash Allometric R package, which is the sort of main way that you would use Allometric models in analysis, at least so far. And then there's the Allometric slash models uh, repository that stores the Allometric models that you use. So those are the three main components. So if you want to find those components, uh, you can go to github.com slash allometric and this stores all the software uh, in an open source kind of way on github um, so this is called the organization page it's sort of the main entry point into the software uh, and you can see here we have the allometric r package which i mentioned the models repository and there's some other stuff we're working on but isn't quite ready but um, you're welcome to to look at those things so the r package um, GitHub page is located at this address and you can go ahead and see this um, you know if you're an R developer you might be interested in you know what's going on in the source code and you can look at all this fun stuff if you would like to right um, second you can actually look at the allometric models themselves in the models repository uh, which is allometric slash models and here um, yeah, you can look at any model. They're stored inside what are called publication files. So you find basically the first author's last name and the year the paper was published in. So let's say we wanted David Hand, we would go to this directory here and we can see that the package stores three publications by David Hand. And you can look and see inside what's going on here. So none of this really makes sense to people who are new to the package, but uh, as you get more familiar with what's inside, this can be very useful to de debug problems with existing models and that type of thing. So that's where all the models are stored and that's where they come from, which is kind of helpful to know. Uh, the other thing to mention is that we have a website at allometric.org and this basically just stores the sort of R package component that has the uh, reference for all the R functions that you're going to see today. Uh, we won't cover all of these, of course, but uh, some of them. And then also there are some vignettes that are useful like uh, you know, if I want to use my models for forest inventories, you know, how would I actually go about programming that? Um, and some other useful information, right? So there you go. Some some good stuff to start with. So I, I basically just have a on the left hand side here a, a basic R terminal that you would see using R Studio or VS Code or whatever. So we're just using the interactive R terminal here and we're going to play around and install the package and do some stuff, right? So. Uh, the first step is to install the package um, using DevTools install GitHub. And the reason for this is because the CRAN release is uh, currently broken. So <laughs> at least at the time of making this video. Um, so if you want the latest and greatest, I recommend using the install GitHub uh, approach uh, for the latest cutting edge version of Allometric that should hopefully be stable. Um, yeah. So this is going to run for a little bit, and there we go. So we have our library installed. You uh, load it using a library like anything else. And the next step is, if this is the first time that you've kind of installed the package and so on and so forth, you're going to want to run install models, and that will run the uh, model files in that model repository I, I showed you earlier. So you can see that each... Uh, publication file is running uh, and that's going to create a local data set of models for you to use. Um, we are planning on expanding this type of uh, installation process into 
you know, maybe I only want to install models in ca uh, Canada or something like that. Um, you know, that would be nice to have, but we haven't implemented that yet. So you have to install all of them. It takes a little bit of time. But uh, once you have them installed, we use the load models function. And that's going to basically load this local data set, which is a table, right? Uh, well, really, it's a tibble, which is a, uh, a type of table. <laughs> uh, and we, we can see here that this model's data frame is uh, 2,103 rows long. And each row represents one allometric model, right? And that allometric model has some uh, metadata associated with it. You have an ID, a model type, a uh, country, a region, taxa, pub ID, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a few other columns uh, we probably won't cover today, but uh, that's sort of the basic setup there. Uh, you'll notice that some of these columns look a little bit weird, like country and region and taxa and fixed, you know, these look kind of funky, right? They're not just values, right? So one thing that's important about this table is that each row represents sort of a hierarchical data structure. Um, and we found that using a hierarchical data structure to represent allometric models is very helpful. Um, so for example, if I, if I want this data frame where one row equals one model, uh, that model could belong to multiple countries. For example, there could be um, apparently some sort of taper equation that was defined for two countries at once, probably the US and Canada, if I have this paper kind of memorized. <laughs> so you have, um, you can see that there's two countries stored in here. Uh, the same applies to region. So region kind of refers to like a state or a province or something like that. So um, if I were a betting man, I'd probably say that this uh, was a Oregon, Washington, and a British Columbia model here. So that covers the hierarchical uh, stuff. Uh, another very important hierarchical column is the taxa. So you might be wondering, oh, how do I know what species the model applies to? It's all stored in this taxa column that we'll kind of go over later. Um, and we have the publication ID, which kind of tells you where the model comes from. Uh, and we have the model itself stored in the model column, which we'll pick out and look at later. And yeah, we have these other, other columns here that we won't go over today. But uh, basically, we, we're trying to give you enough information here in this table to effectively search and find a model that you might use. So that brings us to the next step of searching models. And again, this model's data frame is just like any other data frame. So whatever type of methods you're comfortable using, filtering data frames and finding things inside of data frames, you're free to use on models. Um, there's some special stuff going on with taxa, but we'll tackle that in a second. Um, so you're free to use whatever you'd like to use. Now, I like to use dplyr. Right. Uh, some people might not. Some people might prefer to use base R to do all their searching. That's fine, whatever you want to use. But we're going to use dplyr for this uh, video. So just some basic searching stuff, right? Um, like like I said, uh, one thing we could do is uh, use the table function to just take a look at uh, the model type and kind of see what's going on in there. So you can see now that um, this kind of counts how many models are in each model type class, whatever you want to call that. Um, so just kind of helpful to look at. We have 569 stem volume models. We have 54 site index models. We have uh, 12 crown height, some really obscure stuff, stump diameters, you know, uh, V-bar, you know, <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff in here. So, um, you know, there's 2,103 models and there's probably a lot more allometric models out there that we don't have yet, but this gives you a sense of like uh, what's represented and what isn't. Um, the other one that's kind of fun to look at is pub ID. So this tells you how many models are in each paper that we've added. Now, when we add a paper to the package, it's not as if we always add every single model, so keep that in mind, but um, this gives you a sense of uh, the magnitude of each publication. So the ones that really pop out are like this Han 1984 thing, which is, I believe, biomass models for like every single uh, Midwest tree species you can think of. You know, it's, it's just crazy huge. Um, FBS 2008, that kind of makes sense that they'd have a lot of models in there. So. Um, so we have like, I think 60 something publications added. Of course, there's probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of allometric model publications. So we're really just still getting started, but um, that's a subject for another video really. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Powdell 2019, right? 
uh, Dr. Krishna Podal, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, um, wrote this nice paper about biomass models in 2019. And we're going to try and fish out his ponderosa pine biomass model, uh, or sorry, stem volume model from this paper. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, this really is not too tough. But what I would suggest is using dplyr filter. And we can just sort of start off nice and easy by fishing out Poudl 2019. Uh, and we'll just say Poudl mods. And we can see here that we get the 78 models that we were hoping to get. And that he's fitting some stem volume models in here. So let's go grab those. So we'll say little ball. type stem volume easy peasy right and we get 25 so the other models he's fitting in the package i believe are biomass and like some other there's some other guys in there as well but we're just going to take a look at stem volume so we've drilled down to his 25 stem volume models in this paper and the next thing we want to do is um we want to find ponderosa pine right and the tricky thing about this is it's stored in the taxa column, which is a little bit weird to work with directly. So what we're going to do is use a function called unnest taxa, and we'll just run it just to see what happens. Um, so it looks the same, but if you're uh, carefully watching the columns here, th these three columns got added. Um, so we can now see that there's a family, genus, and species column. Uh, if we want to make that very apparent, we'll just kind of show them by themselves. So ID model family genus species and you can see now that <laughs> in fact there are the family genus and species columns added and they sort of play out like you would think um, so the question is is there a ponderosa pine in here and the answer is yes so we're just going to filter this one more time and take species ponderosa and we'll just zoom all the way back to the front and call it Total Ponderosa. So this should be one row, uh, and it is. And one thing I need to do actually is delete the selection here. OK. So we have uh, Paddle Ponderosa. It's a one row of those sort of original models data frame that we had. And what we want to do is select the model out of that using the select model function, and we'll We'll give it the argument one, which means we'll take the first row, right? And what we end up with is the model itself, right? So what this uh, what this line did is it picked the model out of this column for us. Just a little helpful function to do that. And what we end up with is sort of what what makes up the core of Allometric are these sort of model objects, right? And what we're dealing with here is something called a fixed effects model. Um, which is what the name of the class is that makes this model, right? So when we print the um, sort of standard output of PP mod, um, we can see we get sort of three sections. We get the model call section, the parameter estimates, and the model descriptors section, right? So the model call section is going to basically tell you how can I use this model to predict something, right? What do I need to give it? I have to give it these two variables that are defined below. And what do I get back? Well, I get back this variable defined here, right? So these variables are constructed using something called a variable naming system, which we're not going to talk about um, now. But the point is, is that if you need to know what these variable names mean, the definitions are given here, right? And in addition to the definitions, you also get the units of what you're providing, right? So it gives you a little bit of information about how to use the model to predict. Um, another thing you get is, are the parameter estimates, um, which we can see that there are three parameters A, B, and C here with these values. And we also get the model descriptors, which kind of looks familiar from before. We had the country, region, and the taxa stored inside. Um, we're not going to interact with these two chunks so much today, but we will use the model predict to predict. So to predict, we use the predict function. And the first argument is the model itself. And then the second argument is this guy, right? This diameter of the stem outside market breast height. And this third argument in this case is the uh, total height of the stem. So let's do that. Let's say it's 30 centimeters and 
12 meters. And we get our predicted uh, stem volume here in meters cubed, right? So this might look kind of funky to you guys uh, if you're not familiar with the units package, but what's happening is that Allometric is assigning units to this value, right? So if you want to convert this unit into something else, there's sort of a, a standard way to do that using this units package, which is, I think, very convenient and straightforward. But um, that's why you're seeing this sort of meters cubed pop out here. Actually, I think you can define output units. And let's say we wanted feet cubed instead. You can get the answer in feet cubed. And hopefully that conversion is correct. <laughs> I haven't actually checked that part yet. Um, so there you go. Um, so that gives you a sense of how to do a basic search, um, how to select a model, predict with a model. And, you know, we could do some advanced searching here. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to load this library called per um, for one specific reason. Now, remember I said that we have in models, uh, these sort of hierarchical columns. So we have country that contains a character vector as an element. So this per package gives you a useful function uh, that allows you to sort of like search hierarchical information inside of a dplyr filter call. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and do that, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, uh, we're gonna use this function called map LGL. And what this is going to do is it's going to return either a true or a false value, depending on things as we iterate over one of these sort of character vectors, right? So we need to give it the column name, which is country. And then we're going to define a function for it to sort of check as it iterates over, uh, over one of these character vectors. So we want to find out if, let's say, the country US is in... Uh, that character vector, which is represented by a dot. So what this call here should do is tell us um, how many models are defined for the country US, right? And it turns out we have 1,273 um, models defined for the US. Um, let's see what else we could do. Uh, okay, maybe we want to find how many models are defined for two countries. So we'd say, okay, well, the length of this country vector needs to equal two, and we should see how many come out for that. So we have 90, right? And you can see that every single country call here has two elements. So, you know, some of this is kind of obscure, but it gives you a flavor of how to do it. I think one that I like a lot is um, if I want to know the first author, I can use the family name column. And I want to know all the papers were Han, David Han is the first author. And it turns out we have 50 models where David Han is the first author, right, of whatever publication. So you can see that, you know, it takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around what map LGL is doing, but you know, um, you can refer to the uh, allometric.org help files and vignettes to kind of give you some more ideas, <laughs> which I think are kind of fun, right? So. That takes care of advanced searching. We selected a model, we predicted with it. Uh, the other thing is to inspect a model with str. So we have pp. Uh, the str function is, uh, I think, shorthand for structure is what that's supposed to refer to. So it's telling you the structure of an object, right? So it's just sort of a generic function in R that allows you to, to look at that information. And we can see if we call it on our Ponderosa Pine model, we get just such a rich set of information for each model. We have, uh, you know, the parameters, the specification, which includes the descriptors and the parameters aggregated together. We have the response and covariate units, uh, the prediction function, uh, all kinds of stuff. We have the entire citation stored inside uh, that tells you the journal and the publication date. You know, it's just a very rich set of information. So. Um, I think one of the more interesting things to do is like actually look at the prediction function, which you can do by accessing it using this notation here. Uh, and it just shows you, you know, what is the model, right? What, what exactly is going on underneath the hood when we make a prediction for, in this case, uh, stem volume, right? Um, 
and you can populate it with the coefficients using the populated version. And you see the model exactly as, as it was published in um, Dr. Podol's paper. So for every single model we have, for all 2,103 models so far, you can find this information for those models. So it's very rich and I think very flexible um, for people who are used to interacting with our objects in a sort of uh, low level way. Okay, um, so that covers that last element there. So the next steps are, um, you know, I think the, the natural thing to go from here into a next video would be to say, okay, well, usually I don't just want one model. I want to use multiple models to predict many different species at once um, and that type of thing. So that's going to be a little bit more involved and we'll cover that in the next uh, video. Uh, and then another video we'll release is we'll show you how, if you're so inclined, uh, how you can actually add models into the package, right? So when we say n row models, and it's 2,103 elements, um, maybe you're interested in making that number larger for us, and there is a way to do that. So we'll take a look uh, in the next couple of videos at those topics. Thanks.